Hi, I'm Toby Hodges, and that is the main sail going up on the brand new Grand Tele 65 LC, a stunning new design which I've been really looking forward to sail. And look at that, we've got some good fresh breeze coming in off Palmer Bay. So you may have seen the tour I did at the Cannes Yacht Show 2023 in September last year. We'll link to that. Again, I'm not going to do a full tour of the interior and boat and stuff, but we've done it. This is a chance to sail the boat uh, for you to see what it's like sailing. It's just the images I'm taking now on the boat and there's lots of people on board here, clients and other press looking forward to sailing it. So the images you see will be the extra ones from off the boat will be uh, from a shoot they've already done in lighter breeze. Uh, it looks like we've, we've got about 10, 12 knots at least out there, maybe more. Um, so yeah, let's see what this Matteo Poly design can do. So if you remember, it's available like the 72 came first and then this 65 and available as a long cruise or a performance version. Aesthetically, the difference being the coach roof. So this has this raised coach roof, albeit very sleek, whereas the performance is a much flusher deck. They share this very, very nice hull shape. I would, I, for me, I think this is probably one of the best looking modern semi custom production yachts out there especially when you see it from the aft and how beamy and powerful it is. It's almost six meters of beam back there. And these uh, poly is a very clever designer. So it's got a, you know, a, a V-shaped bow and a very uh, narrow wetted surface area. So it increases power as it heals. Um, sorry, head sail coming out. Increases power as it heals. And the other thing to mention, which I've talked about before, but he's brought this, and I'm just gonna wait for the noise to stop a little bit. Trim the head sail in. Yeah, so the mast has been brought back further aft in relation to uh, older designs. Uh, and that means basically you've got a similar four triangle of that Genoa to the size of the mainsail. So they are, they end up as similar size sails as in a balanced triangle of sails anyway that's the theory let's see what it looks what it's like on the water so sorry for the wind noise but this is the view from the aft quarter and essentially where the main sheet trimmer sits as well because these aft winches are for the main sheet rather than the runners and then the head sail trimmer can sit forward of that but I talk about trimmers but it is a cruising yacht so it is designed you know to be managed short-handed the halyard winches are at mast base um, so yeah with a couple of people on winches you can help get the best out of the bits from the cockpit anyway you can see a little bit already straight into good figures here good amount of heel and power and that's what I'm talking about vast amount of beam brought right back aft here so 5.95 5.95 meters of beam life below decks at heel making nine and a half knots just the water rushing past the sound of the hull oh, and some italian voices obviously stunning conditions here I'm sure there's a lot of wind noise but just to try and show you we don't have wind instruments but guessing we've got about 15 gusting late teens at least now from the white caps still got full sail and we're averaging between nine and nine and a half knots going upwind you head off a little bit, it's easy to push into the double figures. Lovely sailing conditions. So you can see it's quite a lot of helm, quite a lot of heel on, on the helm itself. Um, yeah, there's a bit of uh, pressure on the rudder when it gets loaded up. You can appreciate that, there's a lot of sail up, uh, but nice to feel a single rudder boat. Sailing again, a lot of twin rudder boats out there at the moment. 
and it is a stiff, slippery shape. So as I say, no wind instruments. So I can't tell you what angle we're sailing at. Uh, but we're currently doing 9.2, you can see on the mast display. Whoa, lovely sailing. Okay. Just have my second stint helming this Grand Slate 65 LC upwind. It's a beautiful boat, very nice to sail indeed. Obviously we've got glorious conditions for it. Guessing 15 knots of breeze, a bit more in the puffs. Um, yeah, good fun to steer a single rudder boat again. A few things um, to point out, you notice maybe where the that single rudder is. So it's just forward of the single point main there. It's quite far forward in the boat. Gives you plenty of grip. Uh, and you want that because there's a lot of power in the sails. Um, so the mainsail trimmer's job, mainsail is led to the winches aft here. And the, so, you know, the, it's unusual, but at least the mainsail trimmer, if you have one, unless you're doing it yourself on the helm, can communicate easily because they're quite close. Um, so you can let a bit of push, pressure off that rudder. Um, it's going through attack now. I should also point out this is available with a plinth um, or Uh, or as a captive main sheet as well, and yes, you can have a traveller as well. So the other thing with your coach roof design is that the longitudinal tracks for the Genoa are outside of the coach roof, uh, so you can't quite get as close a pointing angles as you can with the performance. So Franco Carazzo, the project manager, is saying on this it's more like 12 degrees whereas the performance tracks are inboard on the coach roof because the coach roof goes forward of the mast uh, so they're, they're more like eight degrees so it's quite a big difference in pointing if you are uh, i guess wanting to do close tacking angles which remembering this is a cruising boat i guess isn't the big game of it but a rewarding boat to sail in these conditions certainly yeah, so slightly unusual to have the main, main sheet back there, but it, it works. And you can see this has got Baymar hydraulics uh, for the Vang and the backstay. I probably also add here with this open transom, makes you aware how easily, you know, lights can go overboard. Um, and I, I would always want a third guardrail aft as well. It's not just lines you want to keep in, you want to keep people in as well. There we go. Now we're cruising. So the eagle-eyed, amongst you'll notice we now have a bimini. So we came out of Palm Bay, round the corner, in to Adriano Marina there to pick up this bimini. So now we have a nice long downwind leg. So we just set this nice big reaching asymmetric sail on a furler here and what are we yeah, sitting around nine and a half knots and it should be a nice sail back and you should be able to hear what i'm saying a bit more now with the wind coming with us evening now it's about six o'clock wind's just starting to drop off a little bit but yeah should be very nice to see a bit more about what this performance cruiser can do. It's interesting just looking at the, the size of this cockpit area here. It's just how much extra volume this hull shape gives you when you have that much beam taken that far aft. I mean, you can appreciate how many people you can sit in that cockpit. The value of having this long cruise shape, obviously the raised coach roof is one of the values is having this, these deeper combings. Now, yeah, the benches are pretty flat and wide, um, so you want to brace against, but you have got that nice long table to do it against. 
no sort of lockers in that table, but there are a couple of deep ones in the combings here uh, to put winch handles, etc. I also like the styling of this, the way they've wrapped this, the teak up halfway along this combing. Imagine from the outside, it'll help bring that, lower that line even more. So I know I said I wouldn't go all through the interior again because I've shown that and things like the machinery spaces, sail lockers, dinghy garage and stuff. Have a look at the boat show video I did of that, the first look. But for those who don't want to, can't be bothered, don't have time, here is another quick look through the interior and a couple of impressions. So the long cruise version over the performance version, you get this Ray Saloon obviously standing horizon views, lots of natural light and semi-rays, which means two steps down in this case, going forward or back. That allows for um, tank space, predominantly either side, fuel and water, around eight or 900 liters for both, for each, um, and some extra machinery space. Then the engine room, obviously under the companionway uh, and room for the gen set, uh, in there as well, so it doesn't wear the performance, it takes up a lot of room between the aft cabins. You'll see the space you get allowing all that extra aft beam here uh, to enjoy it all. Sorry about the mess, lots of people on board, but anyway, there's neat versions available. Um, this one has its own private um, ensuite there, and then this version has the fourth cabin, which means if the crew or guests that are in that fourth cabin would be, that's why there's also this day heads access into the shower area and that that uh, heads in there. Separate access from this aft cabin as well. Um, and there is also that three quarter height access to the machinery room, which I showed before. And then, yeah, if you choose this fourth cabin, it takes this area here, having a Pullman bunk style cabin in there. That could just be a, a little mess area, a little office, what you want to make it. U-shaped um, galley, you know, reasonable size, works well, um, giving you sort of a, a bit of bracing in here and a, and a good amount of worktop, fiddled worktop, work surface area where you're at eye height to those seated in the saloon. Um, obviously big saloon area with uh, room enough to sit eight or even 10 around that table and a big sofa area, you can sit another four or five around that. I think you can have a coffee table which fills in that area as in a larger one, but it's always an R facing nav station, a large chart table, but that's the format for that. I have got a triple bin stowage in there, but obviously you've got a use two hands to get to lift those as well. Um, twin fridges and a lift top one there. And then there's your bunk cabin, good stowage in there. Um, but if it is a paid crew being in there, they're obviously quite close to the owner's cabins. Good for the galley, but um, yeah, for the master suite, quite close to that. But this is a good size master cabin. The other thing you can do is use this if you wanted to give that uh, an, a heads as well, or a shower area, you could use up some of this entrance way of the master cabin um, to give that a sh you know, shower space for there. As it is, you've got a good amount of stowage in here, nice low berth, that's all stowage below that. Um, this finished in this, uh, you know, teak, natural teak, but it's all of this furniture's foam sandwich to keep it light so it's only you know a thin veneer but you can order it in LP or oak um, as you can see surround stowage there not above the headboard itself um, some natural light coming through those hatches that one's blind got the blind on at the moment those open up L loads of headroom here um, as I say plenty of stowage throughout not going to open them all up again and another good size heads with separate shower compartment for that master cabin. Grand Soleil say reluctant to put a standard price figure on on this 65 now because you know they can tell you what it is equipped um, but everyone equips it so differently 
uh, including all different sorts of uh, rigs, carbon masks, that sort of thing. Um, so there we are trying to take a more of a semi-custom approach to this. Anyway, I'm going back out to enjoy the last of the evening sailing. So this for me is one of the reasons why you would choose a yacht like this. An early evening Mediterranean breeze and being able to harness it and enjoy it to the maximum. And that's what we're doing now. You can see it's flat water, it's very light, very light breeze, but you can see from the ripples, the little gust breeze coming along and we're still doing nine. And when, the, when we get the gusts, nine and a half plus knots, which is good fun really, considering the conditions we have and it's enjoyable on the helm at the same time. There's plenty of performance boats out there, but I would argue not, none that are looking as good as this one is at the moment. 11 knots and it is 10 past 7 in the evening here, late April, Palma, Mallorca, pretty stunning conditions to match the boat, 10 and a half to 11 knot, final reach back to Palma on the Grand Soleil 65 LC. It's giving us a nice little reminder about what Italian design and build can bring you. Matteo Poli, now to design, Grand Soleil build, Franco Carazzo, veteran project management, uh, really good fun sporty boat. So this starts at, the noise there by the way, is just as we're furling away this reaching sail. So as I think I mentioned, they don't like to give a starting price because it's a hard one to give a standard specification for, but an on the water price for this boat is about 2.85 million um, X sales, X tax. So it's, it's a 3 million euro boat, essentially. It's a very good looking yacht. I think you can tell I really admire the lines of it. Yeah, I hope the five lucky people that have already ordered one get a lot of pleasure out of it. I hope you enjoyed the sailing tour, signing off from Mallorca.